attention And don't you forget to mention When y'all say it's your time, watch how they gotta pay attention In the last days without do anything to be mentioned on an app designed to put your mind in prison It's extensive Covered in that cost your soul I'm like surely it's Now, among the dungeons for the female slaves This one is the largest All the dungeons here, this one is the largest one And according to the history 150 women were here There was a door at the side closed another door over there. So the only source of ventilation, this one, and the small one that you see at the end. And look, this is the original floor. Human beings were sleeping on a bed floor. And also, there were no toilet facilities for the slaves. Because initially, they were using this as storerooms, and later, all the storerooms were converted into dungeons. So they have to put buckets or containers in the dungeons, for the slaves to ease themselves. So you can imagine those who were sick, like very weak, and could not get closer to the containers, will have to ease themselves. They were women, they had their menses, they were in the same condition. And they stayed here for three months to wait for the ships, because there were no machines. So any ship that came here used the power of the wind from America to this place or Caribbean. That's why a lot of them died. According to the history, when you die, you carry the body and then you throw it into the sea. But when you go to the Mina Township, there's a cemetery in our local language we call Agrofesia, but in English, it's Dutch Cemetery. So Dutch were buried there only before, but the custodians of the land were drawn into the sea. Any questions? All the female slaves who survived through the brutalities there, they were all back in chains. They were forced to pass through this one. And down there, there is a door we call the door of no return. So the bed ships were ready to take them away. This iron bus you see went out there. Later, they placed the bus to make sure nobody falls down when the slave trade was over. And also, there were stairs. Today, the stairs have been destroyed, and there is a drainage system constructed. Sometimes when it rains heavily, it disturbs. So they did this. Whenever there is heavy downpour, the rains will just get out of the castle and then to join the sea. So we are going to see the door of no return. Now, when the ships came, all the male slaves who survived also passed through this one. So as you can see, slave exit to wedding boats, to the door of Lord Ten. The small room you see back there, when you look back there, you can see that there's a small room. That was where they kept branding irons. The male slaves were branded. So the initials on top of the irons. So we have initials like I-T-A, International Trading Association. We have some like JSS, John Smith Slave. So they put that side in fire, very hot. When removed, to touch either your chest, your arms, or your back. So the marks will be there for easy identification. So that was where they kept it. Now, we have two entrances here. This is the first one. You mind your head, there is a step down. The second one, you have to bow very low, count five steps before you raise up your head to avoid any accidents. human beings were forced through this one. The sea was very close. Today, it has receded. So there was a ladder down, small canoes to them right from this side, to the picture. Some of them would be crying, 
up to America or Caribbean for plantations. And according to the history, those who died at sea were more than those who died in the dungeons because of how they were packed in the ship. And even when, when the trade, when slave trade was going on, there was somebody around. The name of the man is John Newton. He gave an example that when a ship takes 700 slaves, either one third or half died. Surprisingly, the captain of the slave ship later became a priest. The name is John Newton. He wrote the song. You know the song, Amazing Grace. Yeah, that is the song. But he was actively involved, and later he repented and regretted, and became a man of God. And because a lot of them died, visitors lay with that you see at the corners of the floor to remember those who died in the dungeons, as well as those who also died at sea. So what they are saying is that those people, may their souls rest in perfect peace. And some of the African Americans, some of those from the Caribbean, and some of the Africans do not believe in Christian religion. So when they come here, they also they bring uh, bottles of schnapps or alcohol, they pour it, they pour libation to seek protection and prosperity from our ancestors. That's what you can see the bottles there. Now, before the slaves would be brought to the dungeons at that time, they were sent to a village in Ghana here. The name of the village is Asun Mansur. From here to that village, almost two hours drive. There is a river there. That was where the slaves were shaved. They had their last bath before they were brought here. Many, many years ago, two people were raped buried there. One African-American and one Jamaican. Their names are Samuel Carson and Madame Crystal. They died outside this country. They were buried. But when the Ghanaians were celebrating the first Emancipation Day, their mortal remains were exhumed. And according to the history, many people witnessed the exhumation of their remains. Now, they brought their remains back to this country, to be specific, the other castle, Cape Coast Castle. And then they performed a ceremony for them at the castle. And after the ceremony, they sent their remains back to where the slaves had their last bath to be reburied. They did that to honor them because they were struggling for the Africans, in terms of racism and so many other things. That's what they did that to honor them. So the river is still there. In our local language, we call the river uh, Don Consu, but in English, it's Slave River. So there are 12 guys there. When you go, they also take you through. I have been there several times. You can also visit there. But sometimes, when, when uh, visitors come here, some of them do not get a chance to know the history there too visit the riverside so and you know slave trade also lasted more than 400 years so we can only use 45 to an hour to narrate everything so i was telling one of you that there are books that you get it has the details and everything you have indigenous slave in uganda a cry and then i hope you have to get some of the books so that you keep on any question and it's old 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 dutch when Dutch were here, one of their governors died. They wrote this one to remember the governor. The governor is from Zealand. And Zealand, it's one of the provinces in Netherlands. He was the last director general over the north and south coast of Africa. The governor arrived here on the 16th of January, 1758, and he died 12th of March, the same year when he was 41 years old. And this is a tribute written by a priest, a tribute to the governor. The name of the priest is A. Andresi. The priest is from Vieira, and this is a village in Zealand, a suburb in Zealand. What the priest is saying is that when the governor was alive, he was very humble, he was honest and God-fearing. That's what the pastor is saying about this man. He died, maybe malaria killed him. Now, when you look up there on the sea for any possible attack, when they were here, when British took over, they converted the towers into prisons. So British captured a very powerful Ghanaian king from Ashanti region. The name of the king is Prempe the First. The king was captured in 1896. He was imprisoned in this one for four years, 
From here, he was sent to Freetown in Sierra Leone for one year, and later the king was exiled to Seychelles Island across the Indian Ocean. The same British also captured a very brave woman. She led people to fight the British. The name is Ya Asantua. Ya Asantua, a queen mother, was also imprisoned in this one for one year and later exiled to Seychelles Island. They, they did all these things to them because they resisted British rule. And at that time, Seychelles Island was the British headquarters. Now, this is the church I told you about. This is the first Christian church that the Portuguese built in this country, 1596. When Dutch took over, they were not Catholics, they were Protestants. So they divided the church into two. And they used the ground floor as their auctioning hall. Upper floor, junior soldiers mess, and they built their own church on top of the female dungeon. So we have two churches here. This wall, the slanted wall here, we have a similar one at the other side. Dutch added them when they took over from the Portuguese to support the walls of the castle. But the iron race on top of it, later added by the British. British used the castle as police training school in 1948. Policemen were climbing up and down for training or exercise. Now, apart from these two cells, the rest of the rooms on the ground floor round were dungeons for 600 male slaves, and the women were about 400. The governor was on top of everybody, the middle one for the assistant governor, the rest of the rooms were for soldiers, we have missionary and this side for the merchants. So there were Christians among them. And when you look at these signs, this signs, have you said signs over there? The circle and triangle. So it means some of them were not Christians. They said these are secret society uh, symbols. The circle means eternity, and the triangle is perfection. So some of them were not Christians as well. Now we are comparing these two cells. We are all moving to this one when we are out, and then we see the other one. So just cell. They said some of them went out without permission. Some were drunk, so, so they were disturbing. They were in this one as punishment, and later they will be released. That is why you can see the cell is well ventilated. Yeah. Now, let's see the other one. Now, a cell for the slaves. Those who tried to escape, those who were fighting the masters to be released, Today, we may call them the freedom fighters. They were in this one, no food, no water until you die. So this was a death or condemned cell for the slaves. That is why in front of the cell, there's a crossbone and a skull. Mm -hmm. So whoever came here died.
the toilet and back. You see the door that where the boy is standing. That is the goblet toilet and back. So uh, this is the Dutch Reformed Church, a church on top of a dungeon. So they were praying to God, slaves were down. They wrote this one. This is from the Bible, Psalm 142. Zion is the Lord's resting place forever. Yes, Psalm 142, verse 14. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. This used to be the ball thing, but you can just do it. A ceremony we have called Vihangra. And Vihangra simply suggests when the slaves were going, they never had the opportunity to say goodbye. And after they went to America for a meeting, when they came, they brought a flag. Uh, you see, when we were entering the first cell, there's a whitish flag at the right hand side. You see it when we are going out. It's a mission statement of the whole tour of the castle. And the blood reads, in the everlasting memory of the anguish of our ancestors, may those who died rest in peace. May those who return find their roots. May humanity never again perpetrate such injustice against humanity. We, the living, vow to uphold this. We, the living, vow to uphold this. So I think as we walk out the castle, we all carry a lot of responsibilities. We are just going to preach against injustice. And from today, we see ourselves as brothers and sisters. So I believe uh, that will be the end of the tour. I wish all of you St. Jenny and also um, Happy New Year. Yeah. So I missed the beginning, but he said, in this room, there were 200 male slaves held. So I'm going to show you from this end that I'm at to that end. 200 people compacted in. You can only imagine. This is the end of this episode. Um, as I'm taking time, I know you're going to have to take your time to truly process hope this bless someone. Yeah. It's time for us to return and uh, do what we need to do as people and unify. Shalom. Ascension.